Hello and welcome to Tech with Jaspal. This marks the beginning of our Asia Fundamentals Practice Question and Answer Series Part One today. We'll delve into topics such as shared responsibility model, cloud computing service models, and Azure storage. Stick around till the end to make the most of this session. First question of the series, friends: Which of the following uses signals to allow or deny sign-ins to Microsoft Entra ID? And the options given are. Microsoft Intune, Managed Identity, Conditional Access. And folks, the correct answer here is option C, Conditional Access. Conditional Access takes signals from various sources into account when making access decisions. These signals include user or group membership, IP location information, device, application, real-time and calculated risk detection. Next question. How can you ensure that containers can be created but not deleted in a storage account? And your options are enable blob soft delete, apply a read only lock to storage account, apply a delete lock to storage account, enable container soft delete. And friends, the correct answer here is option C. Apply a delete lock to storage account. Now, applying a delete lock to storage account will ensure nothing can be deleted from it. If you create a read-only lock, then you won't be able to even create the containers as it prevents all modifications, which make it an invalid choice in this case. Now, option A and option D are irrelevant in this case, folks, as soft delete allows you to recover deleted containers but does not prevent deletion in the first place. So both of them are more of a recovery option. Now, friends, we are going to look at few questions which would be related to shared responsibility model. So first, let's understand that in more detail before heading to the questions. So friends, in an on-premise data center, you own the whole stack. And as you move to cloud, some responsibilities transfer to Microsoft in case of Azure, to Amazon in case of AWS, to Google in case of GCP. Now there is a diagram on your screen which illustrates the areas of responsibility between the customer and Microsoft. So let's go through it in more detail. Now on the right hand side of the diagram, you have basically three cloud computing models and on-premise mentioned. Then on the left hand side, there are certain responsibility mentioned. And if you see at the bottom of the diagram, uh, the dark blue color represents customer, the light blue color represents Microsoft, and a combination of both the colors represent shared. Now, if you are in on-premise, as you can see, everything is dark blue, which means you are the owner and you are responsible for managing everything. But when it comes to cloud computing models, you can see there is a shift in responsibilities and that shift is gradually increasing as you go to the software as a service cloud model. Now in the infrastructure as a service model, as you can see all the things which are related to physical host when it comes to physical network, physical data center or physical host are the responsibility of Microsoft. And when you move up in the hierarchy, basically after infrastructure as a service comes mostly platform as a service. Now, if you are in platform as a service, then the responsibility of operating system also shifts toward Microsoft. Whereas the responsibility of identity and directory infrastructure applications and network controls is a shared responsibility. And, you, and as you move to software as a service cloud model, network controls and applications also are the responsibility of Microsoft and you share the responsibility of identity and data infrastructure. And folks, whichever cloud model you are in, there are three things that will always be customer's responsibility, which is information and data, devices, mobile and PCs, accounts and identities. You are always responsible for managing your data in the cloud. As you can see, it's also mentioned here for all cloud deployment types, you own your data and identities. You are responsible for protecting the security of your data and identities, on-premise resources and the cloud components you control. So folks, I hope you now understand what is shared responsibility model and how the responsibilities vary with different type of cloud computing models. With this, let's head back to our questions and start looking at them. 
in which of the following cloud computing model it is customer's responsibility to update the operating system and in the options you have the three cloud computing models mentioned and friends you would have already seen that only cloud computing model where you have access to operating system is infrastructure as a service so the correct answer here is option a infrastructure as a service because you have access to infrastructure you are responsible for updating the infrastructure as well friends the link which i went through is now on your screen feel free to go through this link to understand these different type of responsibilities in shared responsibility model in more detail question number 4 who is usually responsible for performing compliance audits to verify that azure services adhere to regulatory requirements in the shared responsibility model and your options are the customer microsoft azure regulatory authorities a third party provider and friends the correct answer here is option d a third party provider audits are often conducted by third party providers or regulatory authorities but the customer is responsible for ensuring their own compliance next question you are tasked with assessing a customer's shared responsibility level among all the cloud service model what is the correct sequence for listing each model starting from the highest customer responsibility to the lowest customer responsibility so friends the crust of this question is you need to put these cloud computing service models in a sequence where the customer in the top service cloud computing model will have maximum responsibility and the last cloud computing service model will have least responsibility and the correct sequence is now on your screen the most responsibility will lie in infrastructure as a service and the least responsibility will lie in software as a service platform as a service lies in between because it has more responsibility as compared to software as a service but it has less responsibility as compared to infrastructure as a service next question you are preparing to create an azure virtual machine and need to determine the storage service suitable for storing the unmanaged data disks of the virtual machine which of the following options would you choose and your options are containers file shares queues and tables and friends you should use containers for this use case specifically you would use a jar blob storage containers to store these unmanaged data disks blob storage is suitable for storing objects such as vhd files that are used as data disks for a jar virtual machines seventh question of the series your company is preparing to deploy multiple custom applications to a jar which will deliver invoicing services to its customers these applications will require several prerequisite applications and services what cloud deployment solution would you suggest and your options are all the three cloud computing service models friends whenever you have such questions then you need to think about customization needs and if the question is talking about lots of customizations then you will have to go with infrastructure as a service model because it offers the necessary flexibility control and scalability to meet the custom requirements your organization intends to deploy millions of sensors to upload data to azure which two azure resources should you create to support the solution and your options are azure iot hub azure file storage azure data lake azure queue storage and friends the two option that you would choose is azure iot hub and azure data lake azure data lake can be used to store data from sensors and iot hub can be used for processing that data next question which of the following is true about data that is stored in archive tier of an azure storage account and your options are it must be restored before the data can be accessed it can be accessed at any time using azcopy.exe it can only be read using azure backup it must be rehydrated before the data can be accessed folks archive tier is an offline tier optimized for storing data that is rarely accessed and that has flexible latency requirements on the order of hours data in the archive tier should be stored for a minimum of 180 days now to read or download the data you must first rehydrate to an online tier either hot or cool 
data in the archive tier can take up to 15 hours to rehydrate depending on the priority you specify for the rehydration operation. Folks, pay attention to the data that I have just talked about in this question as they can form different variations of questions in the Azure Fundamentals exam. Next question, which Azure storage solution should you create to map a network drive from several Windows 11 computers to Azure storage? And your options are Azure SQL database, file service in a storage account, virtual machine data disk, blob service in a storage account and folks the correct answer here is options b file service in a storage account azure files is microsoft's easy to use cloud file system azure file shares can be seamlessly used in windows and windows servers to use an azure file share with windows you must either mount it which means assigning it a drive letter or mount point path or access it via its UNC path. Now there is a link on your screen again. Please go through this link to understand this process in more detail. Thank you for staying with us until the end folks. If you are interested in obtaining the complete set of questions in the PDF format, remember to take the gold membership and send an email to devopshub2023 at gmail.com to request your PDF copy. Before I let you go, if you have enjoyed the content, Please show your support by giving us a thumbs up and leaving a comment on this video.